Hello, everyone. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 2, No Quitting the Home Team. I'm Renee. I'm Dave. I'm Autumn. Hello, I'm Jason. I'm <laughs> present. <laughs> we have special. We have very, very cherished special guests today. That's right. Autumn, how do people know you? Uh, maybe in a variety of ways. But if you're hearing my voice over the microphone, you would probably be hearing me say, Hello, I'm Autumn, host of the Vision for Life podcast, uh, which is an ongoing conversation between the pastors of Fellowship Denver and the church at large. Each week we talk about life faith, the Bible, and how to follow Jesus as we go about our daily lives. And today, Vision for Life is joining No Quitting the Home Team, and we are doing what is called in in the podcasting industry a crossover episode. It's when, like in the Chicago franchise, when the Chicago (laughs) Med doctors... Three people know what you're talking about. It's okay, it's okay. (laughs) Beckett knows what I'm talking about. The Chicago Med doctors show up on Chicago Fire, and you're like, what?! So, that's what we are today. We're what? (laughs) Fantastic. Well, gardeners, welcome to No Quitting the Home Team, and it's fun to be on uh, the Vision for Life podcast, too. So, (laughs) I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the, uh, what the graphics are going to be when this comes out Mm. um, that will identify what this show fits under. Yeah, well, I think when it's released on No Quitting the Home Team, it'll probably be with your graphic. And okay. then when it's released on Vision for Life, it'll be the normal VFL graphic. So go. people, we're, we're really uh, tricking our listeners into <laughs> listening to the same episode twice. twice. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, um, just to get the conversation started, uh, we're going to follow kind of the No Quitting the Home Team format for today's conversation and we always start with a basic question, how are you doing? And that question is open-ended. It, it is meant, though, to kind of get a sense of how marriage is going this week. Uh, where are the pressure points? Uh, what's the good stuff? What's maybe the, some of the hard stuff? And uh, so I'll just throw that question out. Guys, how are you doing? Mm. Well, I'll start. Great, Autumn. Uh, summer for us is really full, and so this week feels much the same. Just, I think, in in the theme of, like, how are you doing? Jason's work is really busy in the summer, so it's... I know, Jason, your phone is lighting up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to... I'm just acting very, very important over here. <laughs> That's fine. Are you, are you a drug dealer? <laughs> I am a drug dealer of sorts. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, it's, his work is really busy. Uh, in kids' ministry, we have some big events during the summer. And so both of our work tends to just be really full uh, during the summer months. And then kids' schedules are different during the summer, and all of our kids are spread out in age. We have mm-hmm. three kids, and they're all spaced out in age. So they kind of each typically, most weeks of the summer, have their own like different schedules. So every week is different. Mm. There's a lot of work to do. And then you feel that, I think I feel the like emotional wish that I could slow down mm-hmm. and just kind of be with the kids. But in order to do that, it's really like robbing Peter to pay Paul. You know, it's yeah. always mm-hmm. the, the back and forth to do that. So this week, I'm feeling much the same as like mm-hmm. most weeks during the summer. Our older kids are working at camp last week and then this week when we were recording. So I'm glad for that. I'm glad they're away doing something that's a good learning experience and uh, they love it and they love being in the mountains for a couple of weeks. And so only our youngest is at home, which is fun. We miss them, but I know they're doing well and having fun and having just Ivy, just our youngest at home this week is sweet in in many respects. But and and so in some ways, I guess it feels like we're juggling fewer schedules mm-hmm. this week, mm-hmm. but it's still just the theme of the summer is that every week's kind of different. And so you're figuring it out every week. And will that uh, continue all the way up till school starts or will you have like a down week? You know, it'll Gosh, just continue stinks. next week though. We do have one week where we're kind of away with mm. family, Good. but Jason um, owns his own business. And so every time you're away for a week, yeah. you're, you, yep. there is no paid time off. Right, it's right, actually right. the reverse. You probably so, pay, you like, have to work twice as much the week you get back and you're like why did i take last week yeah off? or before yeah, like yeah this week i'm trying to fit two weeks worth of work into yeah. one yeah yeah, yeah. So. so so we have a fun week ahead that will be great it'll mm-hmm. be great to be away and to hang out with family and um 
But as far as just the like juggling things yeah. and the full, full schedules, it'll continue up until school starts. Gosh. <laughs> I've heard you mention before, and we've talked about this, that for a lot of our schedules on staff, summer, it, it's not time off, but it, some of the intensity um, alleviates somewhat. Mm-hmm. Except for you. And, and Michael, probably. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You and yeah. Michael. Yeah. Kids Ministry and Student Fellowship. Yeah. Just keep right on keep, cooking. So <laughs> you know what you should even, do? You should, if you go, like, I was thinking about this when Michael took the kids to Mexico. I was like, he he's worked he's working 24 hours a day, essentially. He should clock, he should, like, keep track. Hey, hey and then, as our <laughs> management <laughs> team uh, would and then, out, step and then in. meet out those in, like, time off, like, paid time off later. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Renee. I took one half of a comp day already, so... <laughs> It's totally fine. You're good. (laughs) Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's me. In all of that, though, I can stop and and definitely uh, account for so many things that to be grateful Mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it doesn't, it's not crushing, but it is tiring. Yeah. Really exhausting. Yeah. 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 Renee, how are you doing? So I think um, we we did something last week that we generally don't do and we should do more. And I think it's, it's buoyed us just in marriage. So I actually had surgery on my birthday. Um, so we didn't really do much on my birthday in April, but Dave got me tickets and we just tend, we, we tend to spend money on our kids and our kids experiences and often don't splurge for ourselves. Right. But because I was incapacitated and Dave didn't ask me, he spl- I probably would have told him, no, don't buy them. But he bought us tickets to Billy Joel in Denver, which was in April, and that was going to be in July. So, and then I couldn't cancel them, and I couldn't resell them. So we, well, well I bought them. And I so know that's why I couldn't. That wasn't an option. I know that's what I'm saying. I couldn't somehow like undo what had been done because right. I didn't purchase them. So we went to Billy Joel last Friday night, and we biked downtown, which was super fun and Billy Joel was incredible Mm -hmm. like to be 75 years old and sing like that still I mean almost sound better live than recorded and his I mean obviously his piano skills are just incredible the show was incredible it was so fun we biked home on the Cherry Creek Trail after midnight, and I thought we might lose our life to, yeah, to a few, was, to a few heroin dealers. There was some tension there. Yeah, coming home. Yeah. But I feel like we just haven't done a splurge for us mm-hmm. like that in a long time, and it was fantastic, and we should do it more. Okay. See, Noted. good job, Dave. Noted, yes. Yes. And mm-hmm. I wouldn't have, I would have said no, I think, if you would have asked me. Right. But it was a gift. It was a gift. Yeah. Yep. So All I think I heard was don't spend money on your kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's an astute observation. <laughs> and you know, you gotta you gotta you gotta spend your money where where your heart is. And so Maybe cut that. <laughs> yeah, that's so cheesy. Yeah, in the world. <laughs> I, I wanted to say, I wanted to say, you know, kids are maybe slightly overrated. Uh, that's that's what I'm trying that's to better. say. That's better. That's better. <laughs> but uh, we're... as I look at Jesse's guitar collection over there, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. Maybe it's like you know, Sorry, kids, kids no don't camp this week. Daddy right, needs a new Daddy guitar. Needs a new guitar so. <laughs> Only four of those are mine. <laughs> Do you want to give an update? How are you? Um, how how are you doing? How am I doing? Uh, I am doing. I f- I feel like I'm um, catching up still, even from our time away. Hmm. Um, I for our staycation. I thought you meant from being held back in first grade. <laughs> yeah. still, I am catching still up. catching up still there as well. <laughs> um, it, maybe next year. Uh, but I, I kind of feel like um, uh, my schedule and stuff that we have to do, it's already, it's already going so quickly to, to jump in on it. Like you have to jump in on a dead sprint, mm-hmm. and I just in like my, stuff for the fall. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I just, I, I just, I'm having a hard time doing that. Mm. So I just kind of come in, do what I have to do, but just to to be on a dead sprint, 
I'm just not quite prepared for that yet. Mm-hmm. So um, I just am kind of managing right now. This is all work stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of home stuff, I feel like I'm doing really uh, doing great. Enjoying the summer. You're killing it? Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like it. Billy Joel yeah. was great. Yeah. I know. There is a high there for hearing you say that. I'm not going to lie. It's money well spent. But um, with Beckett and uh, basketball stuff with him over right. the summer is fun. We have a, the Turn final on. tournament of the summer is coming up this Saturday, and our team's looking pretty good. Yeah, but they got their opponent, and it's like SoCal Elite. And I'm like, there's a team flying here from Southern California to play in this tournament. I think you guys are in trouble. <laughs> yeah. No, our, our boys are ready for it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Hopefully we can score. <laughs> we lost 50 to 2. Uh, no, hopefully we can. We, we should be competitive. But I, I'm excited about that. And Will's in such a good place right now. Yeah, he is. Uh, relaxing. And Ian's <laughs> somewhere in Europe currently. So I don't know. I I, I feel like with with the kids, it's it's pretty good right now. Mm, good, yeah. Jason, what? How am I? Jason, yeah. How how are you doing? How's I'm life, good. marriage? Yeah, it's all good. I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Good. Moving on. Uh, no, I am good. I uh, I am happy. I am generally satisfied and fulfilled. If not, kind of like I echoed a little a little rundown. It is my busiest time of year and some really busy times for her. Um, so in that, I have a little bit of sense of the scramble to get everything done kind of overtakes the the experience of doing it because I enjoy like my work and my marriage and our parenting and all that. But sometimes you're just doing it all to get it done. Yeah. Um, but that is seasonal. Yeah. So what when is like the beginning and end of the busy season? Like what is is there sort of a Depending on how, you know, weather changes in Denver in early spring. So right. middle of March okay. to October. October, November. Yeah. Again, weather That's dependent. a long busy season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. But yeah, the, the peak peak is, yeah, pretty much end of April through. Usually I'm quieter in July, but I've been slammed. So mm. I'll take it. Mm. I'm going to insert a little parenthesis here for our, our listeners. So you just heard Jason talking. Uh, this is my husband, Jason. <laughs> and we joke, I've been on staff now at Fellowship. We've been a, a part of Fellowship for a long time, but I've been on staff for 12 years. And almost every Sunday in our life, I come early and make sure all the kids' classrooms are set up and stay until like through... All the services, and for a while after. And so, I go to a different church. So Jason, <laughs> Jason is on solo parent duty on Sundays. And so a lot of our listeners go to fellowship. Not everyone, but a lot of our listeners attend fellowship. So if you've seen me on Sundays, you usually just see me um, kind of unattached from my family, like in physical presence, even I think though most people prefer that. <laughs> even though they they are they typically do come. So Jason and I joke that people either think I'm not married or don't know who my husband is. And then if they see Jason, he just comes in, you know, with the kids. And often he and our kids sit in the service together. And sometimes I get to join, sometimes I don't. And so people think he's just this sweet single dad who always brings his (laughs) children to church every Sunday. Just trying to get the kids their dose of Jesus. (laughs) I have a similar, I have a similar reality. And often I'll be sitting in church and during the welcome, you know, someone who's sitting by me, I'm like, hey, and they're like, how long have you been here? And I'm like, a while. And then it tur- you know, right. it comes out eventually. It's like, yeah, I'm Dave's wife. And they're like, oh, I wondered who you were. Like, I I didn't know if he was married or if, like, you you went to another church. Or it's like, I just didn't know you existed. So I get that a lot, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, nope, I'm here. Hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes more literally than <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. Oh, good. All right, guys. How about a little article talk? This season on No Quitting the Home Team, we are reading uh, viral articles. Uh, some articles are highbrow, some not so much. Some 
come from reputable sources, others from maybe more questionable sources. But <laughs> but all fun. But it should be fun nonetheless. Yeah, fun <laughs> articles that hopefully will help to uh, help to spark good conversation, not just for a podcast, but ultimately for for couples at home in uh, in their. Uh, uh, conversations about how to improve and support their own marriage. So today's article. And interestingly, today's article is describing what it de- what articles do in Dave and I's relationship. Yes. So we have used articles to kind of solicit interactions. Mm-hmm. So like when I want, like just to talk about something deep or talk about something silly, I'll send Dave an article and be like, ooh, tell me what you think about this, which is the process in which our discussion is talking about today. Yes, and based on how I respond yep. to that forward of an article, I either do or don't do what they're talking about rightly. <laughs> so um, here's the name of the article, and I'm sure we, we have it posted. Um, so... Many of you already know what it is, but here it is. Uh, it's a CNBC article, dot com, CNBC.com article. Here's the number one thing that makes relationships successful, say psychologist who studied 40,000 couples. That's a long title for an article. It is written by uh, really famous marriage researchers, John and Julie Gottsman. Um, they are are, of course, the, the famed originators of the Marriage Lab at the University of Washington. They've written a bazillion books on marriage. Some of these books we've read mm-hmm. for previous episodes, and so many of our listeners probably are familiar with them or their work. And, um, and this article is a nice summary of maybe their, their, their foundational insight for 50 years of marriage research. So that's what we're talking about. This is the article. Um, so I want to say, I want I would love to hear everyone's, when you hear that, the one thing, the, the primary thing you can do to have a strong marriage, what immediately pops into your mind, even like before reading the article? I mean, we're, we were kind of set up to know what they would say. Right. But still, I'm, I was just curious what, hearing the title, what would you think would be the number one correlation between having of most couples having a good marriage. I don't, I don't know if I would think that uh, this is true, but what pops into my mind is just time, time Time. and investment spent Mm -hmm. like some version Mm -hmm. of that. Okay. What about you love? I think I've been so influenced by the Gottman's over Mm -hmm. the years and reading Mm -hmm. their stuff. I assume like when I saw that article, I assumed it was some version of bids for affection, or, hmm. um, and I've and they've used that language before, like you know, famously they're like, we can tell within five minutes if a couple is going to get divorced or not, and it's all based on this: do you turn towards a bid for affection or away, or do you shut it down? And they and they mentioned that in in this article, and but they've been saying this for a long time. Yeah. And so when I saw it. Uh, which is why it caught my attention initially when I saw it um, on Apple News. Uh, I was like, okay, I bet you that's what it is. And so, and I was curious if it wasn't that, what it would be. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. So, do you want to give us a summary? Okay, so here's the summary. The summary is so here's the number one thing that that is a predictor of a healthy, long lasting marriage. And they, they call it, um, awareness on bids for affection. And it is a kind of communication, Renee. Like it is definitely, a, it is communicating, but it is a, um, not just talking. Um, every individual within a, a, a marital relationship wants to receive and give affection. How, though, does that happen in real life? And what they've observed through the marriage lab, and if you haven't, uh, if you're not familiar with their marriage lab, they literally have an apartment uh, in the University of Washington where they have couples stay over the weekend, and they like mice. <laughs> it's a lab, it, right? It, yeah, right. kind of. And they they try to be as objective <laughs> and scientific about it as possible, but they have thousands of couples who've 
who've done this where they stay over the weekend and they study them. Um, they have cameras and they have them hooked up to all kinds of, of things. And but, they say, act natural. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and drink this pink Kool-Aid. <laughs> <Right. laughs> See what It kind of sounds creepy. <laughs> um, but everyone knows kind of what what's going on. But eventually they do they do capture authentic moments. And um, and they they observed after a while that um, couples um, have with these volleying episodes and where they have a bid for affection, what they call a bid for affection, which is basically like, um, hey, did you I read this article today and it's kind of interesting. And based on the response of their partner, and usually the response is one of three things. They either lean in and go, oh, yeah, that's – what was it? What was so interesting about – and so then it's sort of an opportunity to go back and forth. Or they um, they ignore it, so they just go – they just are like, oh, well, do you know what I had for lunch today? And so just kind of change the topic, and, and they don't pick up on – that bid or that volley, so they let the volleyball drop. Um, or thirdly, they shoot it down. It's like, oh, that's a stupid article. Hmm. Why do you read articles in the morning? Like, shouldn't we do something else? So they they cut it out. They like, it's a destroyed opportunity. And um, and so the couples that have successful long term marriages are ones that are able to eventually pick up on the various ways these bids for f- affection are manifest in the relationship. So it's not just articles, although personally, Renee, for you and me, it's mm-hmm. kind of become that over the years. Well, it's one of our It's one of our methods. Even yeah. back when we, we got the Dallas Morning News, mm-hmm. when we lived in Dallas when we were first married mm-hmm. years ago, we would... Talk and, about articles, literal articles yep. that we had read. And, and another, a new one, I was thinking about this as I was reading the article. We, in the morning, before I get out of bed, I do the Wordle, I do the Mini, and I do the Apple Mini crossword. And then I do Connections. And I try to do them fast, right? Like, I want to do them really fast. And so, a few months ago, Dave started, like, doing Connections with me. And... Now, if I if I do connections without you, <laughs> I think we're in trouble. <laughs> he's like, oh, you did it without me. But I, f- I thought it was interesting how like different types of bid for affections evolves. Yes, and like currently, that's definitely one that's sort of a litmus test of if we're connected, right? Because it's like, hey, you want to do this real quick, or yeah, yeah, or if you're doing it, or if, if I'm you- already doing connections, he knows I'm mad at him. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, and what's what's really insightful about they just end the article this way, but they've explored it in other books, is that sometimes bids for affection have a negative um, shell to it, like the outer covering is, is negative. So it's like um, instead of a, hey, I read this article, it's, a huff or a, you know, doing the dishes loudly. Mm. It's, it has, has more heat to it. Mm. And, and it may, and the husband or the wife senses the negativity. And instead of seeing it as, no, this is actually a bid for attention. Mm. Um, they see it as picking a fight or, or, Hey, this is, this feels dangerous to me. I'm going to bolt. And, and so it's, but really it's a lost opportunity for connecting, hmm. but, you, but you have to like navigate the initial like heat prickle, and prickle, mm-hmm. prickliness to it in which that bid for affection is sort of, is, uh, is masked. Hmm. And that's been, I thought really helpful. So a lot of bids are for affection are just like, why is, why is he just picking a fight or why are you bringing this up now? And it's like, no, it, if you're able to work through that, it's actually what you want to be seen. It's, yeah. it's everyone wants to be paid attention to mm-hmm. in a marriage and not mm-hmm. be ignored. And so, but these, these bids can look different ways. Yeah. That's interesting. Cause that considering the three reactions to it, cause it would be really easy to ignore or change the subject on a negative bid for affection. If you weren't aware of that's, 
what it as was a category. as a category. Whereas if you think of like a, hey, hey, love, do you want to go get a drink with me? Like n- turning that down or changing the subject or ignoring it is, a, is an overt rejection, right? Right. right. But the negative bids for affection, they, don't, they feel it's a little subtler, I think. Well, mm-hmm. and you have to have already kind of thought through when this happens, mm-hmm. my, I have to like resist my knee jerk reaction to be neg- to meet the negativity with negativity. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, to fight or to flight, you know, right, or, right. or to actually to engage it and then return, uh, you know, maybe harsh words with kind words and, and like, okay, I, I kind of see what's, what's happening here. Mm. Yeah. What is, what a bid for affection look like for you guys? Similarly, well, to what you were just talking about, the kind of negative bid for affection, the, I don't, Jason actually responds in that way really well, Mm -hmm. but I don't think that in the scenarios that I can think of in our home and our marriage, when I'm kind of uh, frustrated or um, he just is, he cares about me and is attuned to that. I don't know that in my mind, though, it's a bid for affection. Mm. Like, I'm not saying I wish Jason would pay attention to me. Mm-hmm. I wish I just am feeling off yeah. for some reason, whatever, you know, pick, yeah. pick a day and a reason <laughs> for whatever reason. And he's really good at not uh, not engaging the flight response, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but also not not like picking a fight, just asking mm. like, hey, what's going on? Being attuned to it and not letting me kind of stuff my emotions and mm. just pass by it and deal with it which on occasion we all you know there's that necessity to um to move past something quickly Mm -hmm. because of the reality of what you have to deal with in your day yeah but in moments when he can jason's really good at at just uh at leaning in and asking and kind of helping me like not being put off Mm -hmm. by it and just helping talk through it and helping us get to the point where like okay, this is this is maybe what's actually going on, or no, it's not at all about you. Yeah. It's just about this circumstance, yeah. or you know, or yes, it is actually about you. <laughs> and this is <laughs> this is frustrating me right now. But he's really good at that. I think similarly, well, it's a game. It's a game. You gotta, well, you got to figure out what you're what you're working with. Are you dealing with the the person or the the problem that's happening? Yeah, which yeah. It's not really a game. It's just what you're working on. Like, it's, yeah, she struggling because of other things or is the thing that's happening actually the frustration Mm -hmm. yeah 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 and then we um i really really appreciate good conversation Mm -hmm. just in general Mm -hmm. in life and so similarly we share a lot of like what we're reading Mm -hmm. um or something we saw in the Mm -hmm. news or online a, a lot of that like talking about what we're learning, what we're thinking about. Did you see that? And just having good conversation about it. I spent so much time trying not to look dumb in front of my wife. (laughs) (laughs) It's Uh, it's effort. (laughs) It's effort. Uh, Yeah, you're really underselling this here. (laughs) Uh, I mean, what would you say? Do you have other, how does it look in, those are ways that we connect. Uh, Yeah, I mean, articles and tidbits of stuff like that comes up. We share stuff all the time that mm-hmm. way. Um, I think this is like a thing that's, I've read about this, like socially people, it's if they constantly send you little like memes or, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. videos or tidbits of this and stuff. That, that's kind of what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll have it with, yeah. Real highbrow articles, which we read, <laughs> which we read tons of. Um, <laughs> Uh, on the, on the respected with BuzzFeed up website. Our, right. Exactly. Up our, 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 good, our deep conversation. <laughs> no, it happens. Um, but there's also the little things. Uh, those are the ones that you have to, we, you got to try to pay a little closer attention to. Yeah. Because it's easy to like see the big one and be like, oh, let's have that conversation. Because mm-hmm. um, that's interesting. Um, but probably the one I think you do that maybe you don't notice, or you, maybe you do it on purpose, is uh, trips to Home Depot without the kids. <laughs> It's yeah. a clear one to me. It's like, oh, the kids are all busy. I need to go get one thing from Home Depot. Do you want to go? I'm like, well, I don't, you don't need me to go get a power supply. But 
that's not what you're asking. So yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, that's yeah, good. that's true. Yeah. That's very how many true. years in the marriage did it take to to figure that out? Uh, seven and a half. Seven and a half years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's about. It seems yeah. about right. Yeah. It seems about right. They call this what they're describing in the article turning toward. Yeah, I like that yeah. language that they use in there. I don't like that they say <laughs> the number one relationship hack is turning toward. I don't. I just. Yeah. I think hack is so misplaced when it comes to marriage or parenting. Yep. That yep. when I experience this in our home, it's born out of a true affection. Totally. And the practice, the repeated practice of caring for that person. Yeah. And then when when you were describing Dave summarizing the article, the behaviors that go along with an ignoring a bid for affection or turning away from it, it's it, I think that that is like a a form of self-preservation or self-centeredness maybe mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. at work at times. Mm-hmm. And so putting effort into continually kind of noticing the other person, being attuned to them is, I think, much, I don't know, much deeper than yep. a hack. I know I what they're saying. A hack is like <laughs> an easy way to get a good result. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah. a hack a meal is like, I can buy these three ingredients from Trader Joe's. From Trader Joe's, totally. And it, <laughs> and it turns out okay. Like this isn't a hack. This is like hard one. Yeah. With yeah. a lot of like... Patience and prayer, and it's ma- like major, like habitual level kind of mm-hmm. um, ways of operating. It's a discipline, being, not yeah. a hack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, for sure, I agree with that. What are what else would you say are your? I'm just curious, like if like we ask them, what are your bids for affection? What are your bids for affection, Dave? Other than what we talked about, um, I would say, oh gosh. I didn't know you were going to ask me that. <laughs> you should have known. I know, I know. Um, my bids for affection, other than what we've talked about, I mean, I do think a text, you know, mm-hmm. like, how, like, hey, what's up? How are you doing? Whatever. Um, I... Um, Gosh, I stumped you. I, you did, yeah. I, I haven't reflected on it beyond kind of the... The topics we've, or the the, the specifics we we've, we've already mentioned. I don't know. What do you think? Like, I think some of it's unconscious, so it's yeah. hard to yeah. yeah. Like, it's probably easier to know what you're spot. I think yeah. um, if you say to me, and this is a bid for all types of fiction, but you'll you'll be like, hey, I'm going to grab a bottle of wine on the way home. Yes. And if it's an, it's like, not, we're not having people over or whatever. Like, I feel like that's that's more of a signal. <laughs> okay. That's like a bat signal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Right? It probably it is a, fits it in is there somewhere. somewhere. It fits yeah. in there. Yeah. I mean, what, yeah. yeah. It can be both. Yeah. <laughs> it can be both. What are mine? It's a, definitely a version of affection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it also implies like, hey, let's let's hang out let's watch a show mm-hmm. let's talk like it apl- it implies interacting that mm-hmm. evening mm-hmm. cuz often evenings are like hey i got to work on this or yep. um you know i've got i got to get this prep for the next day or i'm going to bed early or whatever yep. so it it implies like my response is either accepting or rejecting the offer of time in the evening yes i mean i i would say with with you it's when you're on the couch and you like are reading a book or like when you seem available that's my bid for affection for you yeah oh interesting yeah well i don't know if if that's like i'm just like i'm relaxed so that means because i'm more of the doer right so i'm usually in motion right so when you're not right then it's it's like like, i'm open you're i'm open for relational business yeah exactly (laughs) exactly and i better like you better better struck by that or entire hot um, oh, that's so interesting. I'm glad I asked I guess, you that. Yeah. I guess that makes sense in terms of just like they're saying, you know, be emotionally available. Yes. That's what this comes down to. Yeah. Even when it's inconvenient yeah. for you, yeah. if your spouse is indicating that in some way they, they want you to pay attention or yeah. just wanting to engage, mm-hmm. then you have to choose to be emotionally available. Yeah. 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 Which is hard, which is different than being physically because you may physically be there, but be constantly rejecting and mm-hmm. emotionally with John. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't well, like that doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, but to be present and to be responsive yeah. emotionally and present, then mm-hmm. that's pretty good. I think one thing you do that I think might be hard for some people that I that you I think you do very intentionally that helps with this is you 
always texts me back from work. Mm. And Which even we've had to learn. We have. But mm. I feel like that is huge for me. Mm-hmm. And if you're in a meeting where you can't, you do right afterwards. I'll try and I feel like a lot of spouse, like a lot of relationships that does that can't happen but right. doesn't happen. Right. And I think mm-hmm. that's a lot it's inconvenient for you sometimes. Mm-hmm to interact with me during the day on various things. And sometimes we get in this, like if we're both tired, we just find the like the gifts of like the the girl that's being dragged by the carousel. So we, it's like how many silly gifts can we find of someone just like, like, d- like being so exhausted they can't keep their eyes open. But you'll, you'll text me those back and I know you're busy when you're at work and I'm sending them the like fat cat that's like falling asleep in the corner of the but I think that's been really that's an example of this that you've done that has been really helpful for our relationship and it, and it's but it is fun it is fun to do but it does stay engaged and it's yeah. like hey we're, we're we're kind of with each other even though we're not physically yeah. present yeah cool alright anything else guys about this article or the idea of bids for affection or turning in well they give they give a couple of like specific in the article just a couple of specific suggestions um, like how to put this into practice and they say uh, like do this 10 minute check in which struck me as something similar to what you guys have said mm-hmm. on the podcast before mm-hmm. like uh, they say you know if in the morning is there anything you need yeah from me today yeah but I think this has become Jason really doesn't love our our calendar discussions <laughs> um, but calendars are stressful to me yeah. <laughs> Well, but it feels like business. It's like, are we talking? They're business? really necessary to well, it make. It forces our... you to face the chaoticness of your life, <laughs> <Yeah>. doesn't it? <laughs> they, but they're really necessary mm-hmm. to make our lives run. Yeah. Yes. And True. so I know Jason. I mean, we, you know, we know that he's realized that. But now he will actively ask often mm-hmm. just about that, like in the evening, the night before. I just don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In the evening, the night, the night before, <laughs> or this isn't like him doing, this isn't a bid for affection, but it is something that he has done out of like care for me and our kids. And um, so he'll, he'll just say, like, if he's noticed something about the next day, he'll actively just ask about it, which is so helpful. Yeah, yeah. So we have our regular calendar discussions where we go over like a month or two ahead or mm-hmm. a week ahead. But then even for the next day, if he notices that something might be in flux or he'll need to cover something with the kids, mm-hmm. he'll just ask and make sure he's aware of it and can adjust as needed. And that makes me feel really cared for mm-hmm. and like uh, – he's an awesome partner in so many respects but that just reiterates the like yeah. it's a version of what they're talking about yeah. here yeah like take some time to connect yeah. ask what your spouse needs and and so that's a way that i think you do that really well yeah it's it's, it's a little bit of learned stuff but like we clearly have different like values on planning <laughs> <laughs> unpack that so I'm just which is which is <laughs> fine um, <laughs> but the reality is it's it's i i learned that it's like much easier and, and better for me for us for me to kind of sacrifice my perspective on planning for for hers because actually everything does work better when mm-hmm. i do that mm-hmm. and so this activity uh, is is part of that so. and it takes a little bit of this the mental load like you you know, when you, because I'm the schedule person in our family too, and there is a mental load of like knowing that you have to catch all of the potential missed schedules. And when he does that, there's a bit of like, oh, this mental load is shared. Mm-hmm. And that's so yeah. nice yeah. to not be like, oh, if I, if I miss this, then like the whole it's day going is off wrecked. The rails. <laughs> totally. The whole day is wrecked. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. And then the other thing they suggest, so like that's their 10 minute check in. And then they have this one that says pick up the pennies, which is just like small moments, more of what we were already talking about. Um, Like eye contact, a simple ask for help or attention, asking for a favor, saying good morning or good night. So they give all these simple uh illustrations it's like how did they know they left your that you left your pennies all over the house it's <laughs> <laughs> the weirdest thing Always i throw away I, stud, they, I, throw I throw away pennies i throw away pennies what does that say <laughs> about me lady and, her, lady and her pennies renee is not stopping to pick I, up I the pennies. literally throw away pennies what does this say about me honey <laughs> you know you like a clean house <laughs> uh, but i think that one other just 
like I, uh, an example of maybe one thing that we kind of practice, which maybe is one of these bids, bids for affection, but is just a, a chance for, a, in terms of just physical affection during the day, a hug, particularly when uh, it is like a, a tough day mm-hmm. or I feel tired. Mm-hmm. or And this maybe is one of your bids for affection, Jason, but I'm always like very willing to just engage it. So, mm-hmm. and then sometimes I come you to get you that just 20 for 20 second serotonin drop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Jason, Jason always points that out. You know, one <laughs> fact know of psychology real. that he read one time. And then he just likes to quote it. The science of a hug. <laughs> kind of yeah. the romance out of that. I like, <laughs> probably saw it on an <laughs> episode of Teen <laughs> Titans Go. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that we're <laughs> super high on the romance. Um Yeah. So that's another, it's it's like a simple, Mm -hmm. small action Mm -hmm. that can be repeated that you both just like willingly enter into, Mm -hmm. take a moment. And so it's short, but meaningful. Mm -hmm. That's what this made me think of. It's something, some small action. You could even kind of rebuff that too, even just in the action. Like if there's Mm -hmm. comes in for a side hug and you're kind of stiff and you kind of lean away. Yeah. Like that, that would be a way to, to. Yep, like turn that turn down, away. Yeah. turn away, yeah. or you can like like lean in, but it's super small and simple. But mm-hmm. um, ooh, what if the turn away is its own bid? <laughs> <laughs> it's the negative bid. That, then you're playing ping pong and it's going too fast. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Yeah, it's no, not volleyball anymore. Chess at this that is, point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I'm losing. <laughs> Dave, if um, this conversation is interesting and people want to read more about it, could you give some of the Gottsman's book recommendations? Yes. If they they didn't listen to last season's podcast. Totally. There's a number out there, a number of his books out there. Probably the uh, the ones that immediately come to mind are something along the lines of this, the seven, seven steps to a lasting relationship. It's sevens in the is in the title. Is it the seven days to more intimacy, connection, and joy? That no. one? No. No, it's uh, so it's one of his books that has seven <laughs> in it, but not the one that Autumn just mentioned. <laughs> Don't buy that one. It's trash. Uh, yeah, we he panned, it has seven in the title. He pa- he panned that one last year. Um, <laughs> that's right. I did that. You panned that, that book one last is year. Trash. Yeah. So thanks for okay. So don't don't get that one. Don't get that one. Um, (laughs) And we're we're happy to provide everyone with such clarity today. (laughs) Yeah. Read read the good one, not the bad one. Yeah. Seven in the title, but not that seven. Uh, But it's one we did recommend last year. It's very short. I I probably should have. No, it's okay. It's very short. Um, There aren't like seven brides. No. Are you thinking of the love prescription? The love prescription, yes. Oh, the seven (laughs) daily love prescriptions. That's the one that I mentioned. (laughs) uh, Or was it the seven principles for making marriage work? That's it. The seven principles for making marriage work. Don't read the love prescription. No, the love prescription is good, too. Oh, well, that's the subtitle. We pan. The seven. It was the seven days. Seven days. Well, this one says, Dave, quote, the love prescription, colon. Seven days. Seven. Seven days to more intimacy, connection, and joy. That's, that's, that's the one. That's, that's the, the thumbs one. down one. You want is the seven principles for making marriage. Work. There you go. That was that one's good. Let's let's stop there. Let's we've got to stop with the titles. <laughs> okay. We've just got to stop with yeah. the gospel. So that we've we've we've. Are you started we've, all this? I know we've identified. <laughs> you were the, the one rec- who's unprepared. So <laughs> no, I didn't know the question was coming. <laughs> we have identified the recommended one. Yes. Let's leave it there. All right. Enjoy. Okay, next segment. Um, this is certainly our spiciest segment of this season. And last week, our inaugural episode... Wait, what's the name of the segment? It's called Spousal Advice. Okay. And the idea behind this segment is that often, because we're so familiar with our spouse, we can say things and it, it just they just don't hear it. Both ways, right? You can Loss say things, of bids for affection. Yeah, lot, you can say things over and over and over again. But sometimes when you hear it from an outside source... You hear it like in a way that's different. So the idea is that each week we're going to take turns offering vi- advice to all the opposite gender spouses out there. So I kicked it off with advice to all the husbands. Not Dave, of course. Not me. Not, Not Dave, Dave, but other husbands out there. 
And then, and actually, it was interesting before starting the podcast today, we talked about the advice I offered Dave actually did this week to, to Sterling Results. Even though you weren't directing it to me. I wasn't, but, but you, and, it, and I wasn't, it How wasn't a pick up on it. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It I'm wasn't a, a genius with this stuff. It I mean, wasn't I, a particularly tense week for us, I wouldn't say. Mm-mm. But even without the, the tension or the like uh, relational fracturing, you still just did the dishes a lot this week. So what was the, what was the advice? Case- well, they'll have to listen to it because it's okay. too long. Okay. It's too long. So now is my response. So now, yeah, Dave is offering advice to wives out to there. To wives out there. Okay. But not to you, but just to the wives out there. Okay. So wives out there, here's some advice. And we acknowledge this is a very passive aggressive section and that the direct application of this section in your life might be harmful. Okay. If you if you invoke this practice. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we're doing it for having the, some fun. So, having so some fun. to clarify, not the the doing of the suggestion isn't harmful. No, no, no. But you should not go about giving your own spouse advice in this manner. Is that right? <laughs> I think generally the idea that being passive aggressive in your relationship is yeah, probably yeah, exactly, not the exactly. best That's approach. That's not the best approach. But we're doing it for the sake of the podcast and for we're the sake of humanity and having yeah. some fun. So, okay, so <laughs> disclaimer. But, but with that stated, okay, wives out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I understand why you might assume that your husband knows what he ought to do. When you're mad. I get it. Maybe you've been married for a long time and you have this expectation that whenever you're upset, this is what your husband ought to do and these are the things that you like it that he does. And here's, here's the advice though. In that scenario, your husband cannot read your mind. He can't. He can't read, he can't, Maybe he ought to, but he can't can't read your mind. So, um, so the advice is is as maybe frustrating as it might be in the moment. Simply tell him what you want. Verbally tell tell him what you want. Most husbands. We read a book about this a couple of years ago that didn't make the podcast. Um, most husbands want to please their wives. They really do, um, but they often don't know exactly what to do to do that. And so as frustrating as it might be uh, to maybe spell out out loud what you want your husband to do, um, it, uh, and you, it would be nice if he would just do it without having to say it, most husbands probably need the more clear just request. This is what you need to do Hmm. for me so just tell your husband what you want that's the that's the advice to other people (laughs) how in in this segment do we have do we have the right to rebuttal or should we not no No rebuttal rebuttal is is next week since it's it's husband advice that turns into an argument (laughs) (laughs) since it since this week is like husband advice to to the wives the you know Faceless, nameless, yes, yes, yes. Uh-huh. Okay. yes. Wives, uh, do you like? What do you think of this advice to this wives, advice Jason? To wives? Yeah. Put me on the spot. <laughs> um, Jesse can edit out in dead space. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> I maybe agree with Dave about seventy percent of it. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe 50, maybe, maybe my thought is give a go Mm. at reading their mind. Take a stab at it. Maybe give it a go. Maybe you get some, uh, some A for effort points. 
Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe maybe you do. Maybe you can read her mind. <laughs> wow! Right? You don't know until you maybe you're clairvoyant. Try it. So give it. Give Lean it. Lean into your clairvoyance. Um, maybe this is just my my sort of problem solving skills coming into place. I'm going to try the try the sort of the easy sort of low hanging right. fruit uh-huh. first. Like I'm going to try this, do that, um, and then see what works and what doesn't. Hmm. Um, but leave it open ended. Don't think that you have the answer. Yeah. Hmm. Um, or ask, and I mean, try a couple of things, and then maybe, maybe ask, maybe. Yeah, is there a start role? off by, mm-hmm. you know, is there a role of like, I know you're frustrated, I don't know what you want me to do. Can you please tell me? Is there a role of you saying that? Well, this is kind of what we, yeah, what we were saying before. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like because the problem might not be that something is undone. Mm-hmm. Right. The problem is often something else. Mm-hmm. So right. can we f- figure out what that is? Do you do you need a moment? Um, are you, you know, just annoyed with something else? So figure it out. Ask. Maybe try to try some of the easy things first. And mm-hmm. yeah, no, I, I, I and then go do the dishes. Yeah, <laughs> and, then, well, and, then mean, the hey, and then the laundry. For it's me, the hours. dishes are always done first. <laughs> anyway, so that's not even a. Uh, a thing that has to be done at the moment. There so you go. There you go. You've if you, the dishes are already your... done, then you know that that one. Then, <laughs> then you've already. That, that, then it's like, okay, now I'm going to have to. That's ask one because... factor that's taken mm. out of the equation. Yeah. Well so. done. Well done with that. Yeah. Um, so, no, I, I think, of of course, you know, um, you know your spouse, and and if if she's upset, or if um, then from the perspective of the husband. Do the sort of things you know that would be useful and helpful and alleviate the load that, that she's feeling, um, and 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 then ask. But from the perspective of giving advice now to, to wives out there, mm, mm-hmm. yeah. I, th- mm-hmm. I think yeah. yeah, I think the 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 corrective is or the the advice is yeah, and this is this isn't just for me. This is like just a bunch of marriage books. There is this assumption that we get into that. Your the husbands can read their wives' minds, and that just doesn't happen. Mm. Now, through experience, you can kind of anticipate, of course, but it's only even if you're ninety percent right, which is depending on what school you grew up in, that may be an A. <laughs> um, it was a ninety-three not, for not me growing up. Uh, Ninety-one, ninety-two, still B. Um, but you're still going to be wrong that seven percent, and that wrong. Sometimes in that seven percent is something that could be really, really uh, hard. So, the I think the the advice then is for wives is is um, don't underestimate how helpful it would be if you just were clear on explaining what you want. And and most husbands actually want to please you m- want to yep. to to do what you want but they are are confused yeah and then the dynamic interplay of those two things yes yeah. right yeah. like if if you you are cl- the wives are more clear with like I'm frustrated I need you to just do this and the husband is making an effort to do what he knows often works yes. do in the that dishes, situation do the laundry yeah. and the no. dynamic <laughs> interplay of both of those could be very powerful and yes. and alleviate a lot of marital stress sometimes it's don't do the dishes <laughs> let her do the dishes right right while right. you distract the kids right right um because sometimes that's simply the case yep. because sometimes yep. the frustration is all the stuff that happened in the day prior yeah yep. that's loaded up and she just needs to feel a sense of getting something done so she can rage do that. wash and yeah, yeah rage, <laughs> rage wash, cleaning rage, rage cleaning, cleaning whatever but yeah. if you take it over you got to be careful. Yeah, uh, right, that's good. Don't, we're, t- we're, don't take it over. But sometimes let them let her have the the thing yeah. she's doing, but take over the other things. Yeah. So mm-hmm. when the youngest is going, mom, 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 <laughs> mom. Theoretically, put them on the swing set. What? <laughs> Hi. This right. Do you see that, <laughs> that cartoon? Hi. <laughs> Fan, fantastic. That's spouse advice. All right. Finally. We have hot and cold. Guys, what are you hot on? What are you cold on right now? 
Autumn, mm-hmm. I know we were talking about something earlier. <laughs> I can see it see it in your eyes. You're cold on something right now. I can, I yeah, can yeah. Feel it. I'm out. <laughs> I'm I'm cold on uh the flags and yard signs that are indicative of a certain like ideological tribe mm. on either side. Mm-hmm. I'm out on that. You're out. You're mm-hmm. just you're cold out. on it. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> what about like, um, like college flags or like American flag or just like or fl- college yeah, flags you hate America, should Autumn? stay in colleges. <laughs> 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 or like <sighs> rainbow flags for pride. Like, do those fall in the like yard sign kind of category? Uh, so I I suppose you know there's there's a there's a sticky point in here in that the hot or cold. <laughs> Right. It's always not new, not very nuanced, right? Right, right. So, in general, out on something that is motivated by saying, I need to let everyone yes. else know what I think about this thing. Yeah. And so, I have to post it publicly yeah. somewhere. But, and do you feel like it's consistent with even, like, social media posting? Because I feel like that's a thing, too, where people have to be like... I think this. Yes. And attach it, themselves to a yep, certain perspective yep, yep. Um, to indicate that they are on the right side of whatever issue it is, yeah, which yeah. is typically, I think, it's a version of virtue sig- signaling, yeah, yeah. Um, the whole flag or yard sign. Yeah. So to the, I mean, there's some, some nuance. I think things like, <laughs> you mentioned like college flags. Yeah. So if you're flying the flag of your alma mater or a, a college you want to support or where your child's going to college yeah. or whatever, there's a sort of institutional attachment there mm-hmm. that I can appreciate mm-hmm. that is like, I'm, you know, at a soulful level, I, I love this institution. Yeah. I, I'm attached to them for some reason. Um, and I think that's a little different than virtue signaling. Yeah. If you're if you are flying a Texas A&M flag because you think you're morally superior to people, <laughs> then I suppose it falls into the same category. Yeah, then you're out on that. Yeah, then I'm out on that. (laughs) I'm out on that. If you are are, uh, flying an American flag not because of genuine patriotism and out of a desire of good for our country, but you want to say I'm conservative and that's what conservatives do, then, you know, I can't tell that. I can't assess that, nor am I trying to. Just then I would say that, yeah, I would be out on that perspective that leads to this this sort of like, I'm going to fly this flag because I'm attaching myself to this particular ideology. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What about school signs, like the neighborhood elementary school? I feel like you have a personal stake in this question. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's hot on that. that Are we cold on those two? <laughs> yeah, no, similarly. I mm-hmm. think like, you know, you're yep. attached to an institution. Yep. You yep. want to promote that institution. Your child goes there. You're probably hoping for the good of yeah. whatever school that is. Yep. I think that's a little different. Yeah. 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 All right, good. Anyone else? Something you're cold on or hot on? Yeah, Jason, you said you had a hot on, you're warm on, like. One of my, oh, what, yeah, what am I into right now? Yeah, yeah what are you uh, into? In on. Yeah, yeah in uh, on. Uh, I'm in on IRL. You know what it is, Dave? Are it's you, like, are the, you with I had, the, are you hip I'm not kidding. Kids? I had to, lo- I had to look that up you, last <laughs> week. So, yes, <laughs> in no. real life. In real life. Yeah. Um, I'm just done with the internet. So, I, all four. Everything in person, just mm-hmm. embodied yeah. mm-hmm. interaction as much as possible. Yeah, I think psychologists I'm and sociologists a, would agree with you. I'm not a I'm not a social person. <laughs> She'll attest, but like, <laughs> wait, what do you mean you're not a social person? Uh, I mean, I'm I, I don't seek social. Mm. Stuff, you but you and what, Jason are somewhat similar in this way, Renee. Like, he just has a certain social battery. Yeah, you know, yep. he's willing to hang out with battery. people. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. he values really good relationships. Yeah, yep. but. His, it's, it's his battery can be it's drained draining. by a lot of socializing, like yeah. in one. But week. just trying to trying to get a social battery like uh, use mm-hmm. out of the internet is impossible. Yeah, right? yeah. Not doing that. So, yeah. but we try. Right. And so right. much. Of, so. Right. Um, yeah, I'm just. And a lot of what I do is by myself. So my work is by myself. Mm-hmm. I ride bikes. Bike gradient ends up being by myself, mm-hmm. um, which is. Great, and to a point, but I also love it when I can do those things mm-hmm. with other people. Yeah. So mm-hmm. occasionally, I'll have a customer who's just like coming by to pick up or drop off, and they get a little bit of the, the unload of my inability to <laughs> chat with anybody else for the whole day. Um, They're like, so, uh, thanks for, I, I, like, oh, you know, boy, I really got to go. go. <laughs> so, like, you're the first real conversation. I, have, I have just haven't talked to a person all day. So, but anyway, <laughs> that's better than the internet. So I'm, yeah. but just trying to... Yeah, uh, embrace that. 
Yeah, embrace it. Just mm-hmm. experience my uh, relationships like in person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So next time people see Jason out in public, just give him a hug. That's what I. <laughs> or just That's invite fine. him to do something. I mean, that Jesse day. gave me a solid snuggle when he. When <laughs> that I walked is true. In, right? That yeah. is true. That is true. So awesome, awesome. Renee, any anything for you? Um, that I'm hot or cold on. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm super hot on the upcoming Olympics. Oh, man. We just mm-hmm. love it at our house. And it's we get into everything. Like we get into things we would never be into, like beach volleyball and but um, I can't wait for break dancing. <laughs> as an like how are they gonna judge it as an Olympic sport? Is it a thing? Sport? Yeah, it's yeah. a new Olympic mm-hmm. sport. And is it skateboarding too? Did I see that? Yeah, yeah. yeah skateboarding. skateboarding. Yeah. But I think I think there's a um Patriotism, you know, all of that has gotten so strange in the last decade. And it just feels like a, a pure remaining space mm-hmm. where you're just excited to cheer for people from your country mm-hmm. and in honest competition. You know, I don't know. It just feels it feels like a pure space than we have almost anywhere else. Yeah. And it la you know, it's a good chunk of it's what, two and a half weeks, two and a half, three weeks. So it just gives like a rhythm to your evenings and you get it in you know, the media does such a good job now of like delving into the personal stories, which I love. So you kind of get, you get to know these people and I don't know, I'm just super hot on it. I think it'll be, the kids are super excited about it and um, we're going to be in the mountains for the end of it. So we're super excited. We're going to make like ethnic food related to who we're cheering for. And yeah, I'm just, I'm excited about it. I'm hot on it. Yeah. Hot on the Olympics. Fun. Yeah, it, it'd be fun. I'm hot That's on the, like watching people swim in the Seine River and not die of yeah, we'll contamination. See, huh? <laughs> we'll, we'll see. see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> Jerry's out on that. Yeah. They were I, like, is the Seine going to be ready for the Olympics? <laughs> and I was like, how do you manage that in a few <laughs> weeks? Clean the Seine challenge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Impossible. Right. We I have a couple. I love track and field um, and iron track. So I have a couple like people we love and are like. Who we, fo- who we followed. followed all year. And yeah. Or for years. So yeah, that's what I'm hot on. What about you? Um, A quick one. Okay, uh, I am hot on organizing my books right now. Yeah, you are. So <laughs> over staycation, I built a giant bookshelf. A and if you guys have ever been to our house, oh, Dave has so many books. <laughs> <laughs> if you've yeah, ever been to our house, no, we we have strange bookshelves built everywhere. Into we have a tiny house, and they're. Every nook and cranny has a bookshelf built into it. So, um, but I've needed to build, like, I mean, we need more space. And so, over staycation, I built a bookshelf. In, in lieu of just not buying any more books. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> no, I'm saying, um, yeah, clearly. The bookshelf is the option. It, that's the only option <laughs> right. of building more bookshelves. There's not an option of just not buying any more books. Right, no, right. Ex- exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, I, um, anyway, so now that I've built it, and now... There's a whole, like, I can just reorganize <laughs> and thematically organize the books in, in a way that's satisfying to me. <laughs> just kind of, I find myself, and I think you've seen me a couple times, just sort of... <laughs> just a few. Just l- looking at, like, oh, yeah, there's these books and that books. So, anyway, I'm really, I'm kind of hot on that right now. <laughs> there are sometimes I'm cold on it. I get a little, it's like, it's kind of maddening, and it's like... Uh, all those books, it's so overwhelming. This yeah. is such a humble brag, Dave. <laughs> I'm doing the same thing with my stock portfolio. Just, just, there's, so, there's so much. I just, how do I organize how it? How do I make the most effective use of all of it? That's what I'm super hot on. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's good. That's same thing. It's I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, I hope, you. Thank you. I hope you have many more bookshelves in your life. I, I appreciate it. But that was, that was a ton of fun. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in on that right now. All right. All right, everyone. Um, thanks for this crossover event. Thanks, gardeners, for being here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, it was fun. Come back. Most fun I've had today. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I always hey. I always end the Vision for Life with an invitation to email us. So I don't know if, yeah, do. if you yeah, guys have that. Thing. Yeah, we do. Set, but set up. But if you have enjoyed this episode, we would actually really like to know. Absolutely. It was a fun uh, attempt at doing something a little bit different for mm-hmm. both of our podcast platforms. And so we'd love to hear from you. Yep. you if you want to get a hold of uh, Dave and Renee to respond about the podcast, how would how would it's a person do that? Dave at Fellowship Denver. Dot org. Renee at fellowshipdenver.org. And if you want to uh, email us anything about Vision for Life, you can send all of that suggestions, questions, article suggestions to podcast at fellowshipdenver.org.
Jason, what if they want to get a hold of you? I, I was never here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real quick, too. Um, we're inviting people to read the article prior to our next episode. So do you want to um, throw out the teaser for the next article or maybe no? Uh, uh, hang on. Yes. I've just really I've just really thrown stuff at you today, honey. I know, I'm really sorry. I know. And I uh it's going to be oh good grief. <laughs> oh yeah. Are married people truly happier? Great. That's the next one. By where can where can the it's article be the, found? Uh the Atlantic. Um oh, and now that I'm looking at it, it says why married people are happier. Oh. And it's written by someone. Okay. And why, it's in the Atlantic. Why married people are happier in the Atlantic. Yes. Not Ocean magazine. The link will be, the link oh, will be in the show notes. Description. All right. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.